Hello, I'm Clark Zeller. I'm a sales engineer with Live Action. This video is to highlight how you can utilize Live Action for capacity planning and performance baseline. Let me show you what I mean. So what we're looking at on my screen is a copy of Live Action. These two larger circles represent routers and switches being managed by the tool, and the smaller circles within them represent the device's interfaces. Now in this scenario, we have a device to the left labeled Data Center and the device to the right labeled Remote Site. This is to represent a very typical MPLS WAN environment. Now in the LAN of each of these devices, we have several endpoints that have been annotated, and we're going to look at traffic flows between these endpoints. Live Action is a NetFlow collector, and if I was to select the Flow tab, I now see multicolored arrows painted over the top of my network environment. Now, I'm currently looking at these arrows based off of DSCP values. These are the quality of service priority markings on the traffic passing through the network, and each color represents a different priority. So at a glance, I can understand not only where is traffic passing, but I can also know end-to-end -end how is my QoS configured and performing on my data. So as we turn our attention to network capacity planning and performance baselining, Live Action has several ways it can highlight exactly what's happening in your network environment. We can utilize dashboards, historic reports, real-time views, as well as the enablement and visualization of traffic generation and simulation utilizing Cisco's IPSLA VO test. Let me show you what I'm talking about for each of these various scenarios. Let's start by looking at the real-time views available in Live Action. To understand the performance of any interface in Live Action, just double-click on an interface and go to the QoS tab. You now see the real-time performance statistics of the interface. To the top of the screen is the in-bar data that's being collected for the interface. Here you can see what applications were found running and in what volume. And to the bottom of the screen is a view into the CBQS MIB. This is an actual view into the QS policy's performance on this interface. Now at any time, you can drill down into how any specific class or queue on the interface is performing, and as you drill down, you can get a very granular view into the performance of that queue's bandwidth utilization on the interface. Now if you want to go back in time and see a historic report for this specific interface, it's just a matter of selecting one of our time options. Here we are running a 15 minute report and we can see the exact same data as we just saw in real time. I'm going to again focus in on a video queue and I can see back in time exactly how my video traffic was utilizing this specific link. Now a key concept of live action is we will never average or aggregate the data. This means no matter how far back in time, as long as you give us a disk space, we will show you a view just like it was happening in real time. We can do this for the last hour, six hours, day, week, or a custom time frame. Like let's say three weeks ago on Thursday at 3 p.m., you can know exactly how anyone one of the queues of any of the interfaces that Live Action is managing in your environment. When it comes to capacity planning, this is a great place to understand exactly how you need to allocate bandwidth to your QoS policies. You can also view the interface's performance statistics from a NetFlow perspective. I'm going to click my Flow tab and click Fill Chart. I will now see the real-time flow utilization of this interface. Now, if I wanted to view this from a historic report, I could also do that too. I'm going to go to Reports and select Flow. I'm then going to run the Application Application Report. I'll run this as a time series report and then execute the report. I now see the bandwidth utilization utilizing this historic report of my interface. What I'm looking at on this specific report is a list of the top applications utilizing the bandwidth for this interface. A key concept of Live Action's historic reports is your ability to interact with the report itself. For instance, if I was to right-click on the top application on this interface, HTTP, I could then drill down and run a sub-report based off of the first report we looked at. Here we're now seeing the source address information of who is utilizing HTTP on my interface. So I now have a very good idea of why HTTP was the top utilized application as a whole on this interface. Now again, because Live Action never aggregates or averages data, we can always show you this very granular view for the last 15 minutes, hour, 6 hours, day, or some custom time interval. 
as well, you can save your historic reports in live action. This makes it very easy to access common data sets in your environment. Here I've executed a saved report labeled My Report. Once a report has been saved, you can then schedule a report to run either daily or weekly, and these scheduled reports can be accessed via a web dashboard, or they can be sent to you in an email, so it becomes very easy to understand exactly how your networks are being utilized using Live Action's historic reports. I would now like to turn our attention to how Live Action can utilize Cisco's IPSLA VO or video operation test in your environment. IPSLA VO tests are a feature that allows our Cisco devices to quite literally become traffic generators, send test RTP streams across the network environment, and this would allow us to either validate or stress test the network environment to ensure that it is ready to handle a video deployment. Let me show you how we can do this with live action. As we begin, I'm going to zoom out on my network, and we're going to look at a couple of additional devices that have been hidden from view. These are actually two 3560X switches that support IPSLA video tests. I'm going to then select my IPSLA tab, and on Live Action's IPSLA tab, we have the ability to configure as well as visually manage our IPSLA test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can create a IPSLA test by selecting Manage System Test. There happens to be a dormant IPSLA VO test already created, and I'm going to walk through the steps of how to create and edit this test. So we can see this is going to be a real-time services test. I'll hit Next. We'll name our test. We'll then select a video test, and we'll select IP Video Surveillance Camera Test. We'll go Next. We'll select our topology. In this case, I'll use Hub and Spoke. We'll select the devices that will participate in the test. I'll then schedule the test, and I'm going to change my lifetime to be forever to actually kick off this test and have it continuously run. And then most importantly, Live Action will generate the appropriate CLI configuration for me to push to my devices. I will then click Next, and Live Action is now pushing this new IPSLA VO test to my environment. I'll click Finish. And I'll close this screen. And in just a couple moments, we're going to see where Live Action kicks off this new test for me. Notice how the test has been started. And we can see that based off the charcoal arrow painted across my network map. Once the next SNMP polling cycle happens, we will then see the state of this new test, either green, amber, or red, depending on the quality of the test itself. Okay, so the SNMP polling cycle has come around, and notice how we now have a amber arrow in our IPSLA tabs window. This indicates that this test is running, but there are drops occurring in this VO test. This would be the equivalent of a video call that is choppy or having some sort of jitter or loss or latency with it. So this is definitely an indication that our network is not ready for video in this example. Now let me show you how we can utilize live action to validate as well as potentially update the capacity of our network environment to ensure that this network can handle this new video test. Let's start by talking about the network that our VO test passes through. Notice how our test begins on a 3560X switch. It then passes through a WAN router labeled Data Center. Next is our MPLS cloud, followed by a remote site WAN router. And then it terminates on another 3560X switch at the remote site. Now, one key concept about live action is our devices are color-coded based off their performance state. Notice how three of our devices are green. Green is good. But notice how our data center device is amber, and more importantly, the WAN interface of our data center device is amber. This indicates there's a performance issue with our data center's WAN interface. And it's very likely if we were to fix this performance issue, we would also fix the performance issue we are noticing with our IPSLA VO test. Let's start investigating the performance issue on our WAN interface by double clicking on it. We'll then go to the QoS tab. We're now going to look at the real-time statistics of the traffic passing through this interface. 
Now, the first thing that we want to take a look at is the QoS policy itself. If we look at the bandwidth graph of the QoS policy, notice how it's a very smooth line coming in in about 2 megabits. This is an extremely good indication that traffic shaping is enabled on this interface, especially when we compare it to the corresponding in-bar graph. We can see there's peaks and valleys in the traffic, but the transmission rate of what's actually going out this interface post or after QoS is a very smooth line. We should also take a look at the queues in the QS policy themselves. Notice how two of the queues are amber. They're both labeled class default. This is actually a very good thing. This indicates that our voice, our video, and our high priority data traffic is all being protected while class default traffic is being dropped. Another key concept we need to consider is IPS slave VO test actually send real RTP traffic across our network environment. So I'm going to take a look at our in-bar data and I'm going to focus specifically at the RTP traffic going through the network. Notice how our RTP traffic has very large spikes up to approximately 3 megabits or so that happen at a continuous interval. It's very likely that these spikes are our IPS lay VO test. To understand further if this is really the case, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to understand more about the IPS lay test that we actually generated. To do that, I'm going to come to my IPS LA tab and go back to my home screen. I'm going to right click on the test itself, go to manage test. One of the values that we will see is the source port of our IPS lay VO test. We can now cross-reference this information with NetFlow to determine the actual usage of our IPS LA test. Let's take a look at that. As I close this window, I'm going to go to the Flow tab and then double-click on our Amber Data Center device. I now see the raw real-time flow information that's being collected by our Data Center device, but I'm going to implement a custom search. I'm going to search for our flow data based off the source port information that we learned in our flow data and then I'm going to search for the source port of 5000 that corresponds to our IPS lay VO test. Here's a flow that matches that and if I look at this flow closely I can see the source and destination IP addresses or that of the 3560X switches. I can see the source and the destination port of 5000. The application type is RTP. The bit rate is 3 megabit and the DSCP value is that of CS5. This is our IPS lay VO test. Now our next step is we need to ensure that this traffic type is put into any video queues in our environment to ensure that our IPS lay video test get the same protection as our regular video applications would. Let me show you how to do that with live action. Typically, the easiest way to match traffic to a specific queue in a QS policy is that of DSCP value. Since our IPS LA VO traffic is already utilizing the DSCP value of CS5, let's use that and match that to the QS policies that exist on our WAN router at the data center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my QoS tab and I now see a list of the interfaces being managed on this data center device. I also see the QoS policies that are already in place on this data center device. I'm going to right click on the policy named Set DSCP, right click, go to QoS and Manage QoS Settings. This will bring up a dialog window that will allow us to configure all the QoS parameters available on this device. I'm then going to select the set DSCP policy and highlight the set video class. Notice how our set video class already is matching traffic with the DSCP value of AF41. I'm going to edit this and I'm going to include the DSCP value of CS5, the same marking that's used by our IPS LA VO test. I'll click Add Match Statement, go back to my Policies window, I now see both match criteria, that looks good, and I will save that change to our device. Now that that is in place, I will close this window. No, I won't save to the startup configuration. And I'm going to go back to our home screen and then double click on the WAN interface of our data center device. Now let's look at the QoS policy and notice how our video class or queue is now amber. If I right click on that and go to view class statistics, I'm going to see the queue's real time information. And I can see that there are drops that are happening in this queue. Looking at the throughput rate of the drops, we can see that we have peak drop rate of around 3 megabit. 
this corresponds to the throughput measurements we saw in our real-time flow information just a few moments ago. So we can tell that our IPSLA video traffic is matching up to this queue, but we are having drops. So this means the size of this queue or maybe the corresponding QoS policy is not appropriate to handle our new IPSLA VO test. So what we want to do next is we want to look at the interface and the QoS policy as a whole. So what I'm going to do is close this window and let's take a look at how this QoS policy is performing. Notice how it has a very smooth bandwidth graph at approximately 2 megabit. And if we contrast that to that of the in-bar data that is being seen on this interface, we can see that there's actually over 6 megabit that's trying to be sent out this interface. Notice how the top half of this screen is before QoS and the bottom half of the screen is after QoS. So what this means is we are trying to send more data than the QoS policy on this interface allows. So what we want to do is now take a closer look at how the QoS policy has been configured. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a summary of that QoS policy by selecting Adjust Output QoS. Here we'll see the class names, the queue types, the bandwidth reservations. There is a traffic shaper of 2 megabit, 2000K, on this interface. And we also have a pie graph to the bottom of the screen showing a percentage breakdown of how bandwidth has been allocated to the queues. So the first thing we're going to want to do in an instance like this is let's increase the traffic shaping size so the overall throughput of this interface is increased. I'm going to change our traffic shaper to be that of 10 megabits or 10,000K. If our shaper is 10,000K, we need to allow approximately 3 megabits of video traffic to happen. So that would be about 30%. For good measure, I'm going to make our video queue be that of 35%. So that would be about 3.5 megabit of data that we will then allow for our video traffic. Hopefully that will hold both our real video traffic as well as that new IPS Live video test. I'll save that to our device. Live Action is now pushing that configuration change to my device for me. I'll close this screen and when SNMP catch up in just a moment, let's take a look at the new behavior of our QoS policy. Now while we wait for SNMP to catch up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn our attention to our red alert button to the bottom left of the screen. Now what we're seeing on our alert window is a list of all of the QoS policy issues that Live Action is notifying us about. We can be notified about drops. We can also configure thresholds of bandwidth utilization and be warned when those thresholds are crossed. These thresholds can be applied to both an interface as well as to any of the queues on any of the interface's QoS policies. This allows us at a glance to be warned about when there are QoS or performance baseline measurements that we want to be notified about. Now these alerts can be sent to us in both email as well as syslog. So truly before end users complain or your network utilization is higher than you need it to be, you can be warned about such events. So as we close our alerts window, the first thing we're going to want to do is look at the bandwidth graphs, both at the MBAR graph as well as the QS graph. Notice how after the QS change, they're very similar. As well, if we look at our video queue, the one that was just dropping traffic and go to view class statistics, we can see that we're no longer dropping any traffic in the real-time class or queue statistics. Also notice how the throughput measurements of this specific queue are that of now around 3 megabit. So this means we're having both our real as well as our IPSLA video traffic hit this queue and this queue is adequately servicing our video. Now what we want to do is we want to come back to our home screen, go to our IPSLA tab, and notice how our IPSLA VO test is now green. This indicates to us that our network is now ready to handle video. We have adequately given it enough capacity and we've planned for our future bandwidth needs in this environment.